Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Smith of Niocorp. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Mark, there's been so much news with Niocorp, and of course I want to start with the fact that you managed to raise $11.5 million recently for Niocorp with the leadership team and obviously with the super alloys that you have. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, this raise? Yeah, it was, uh, it was very difficult because of the market conditions at the time. But as I've said before, this project speaks for itself. And when you, when you let people know the facts of this project, you know, the, the wonderful world-class resource we have out in the southeast corner of Nebraska, uh, the people that, that want to work for this company and that we've hired to, to really run this project uh, to ground and, and get up and operating, it, it's very compelling and people support it. And, and they've proven once again that uh, when we need to, to raise money to continue the efforts on the feasibility study, they're there to support it, uh, and that's because they really believe in the project. You just put out a recent announcement, of course, about the super alloys that Niocorp has. You've got the scandium, niobium, and titanium. I'd love it if you give our Investor Intel audience an, an update on what Niocorp actually has, the advantage. Well, the advantage is, again, you start with ore grade. You know, that's one of those things you learn early on in the mining industry. Ore grade is king. Well, we've got very good ore grades for all three of those elements in our, in our deposit. Um, we've got a fantastic location. I mean, the people of southeast Nebraska, you couldn't ask for better support. Uh, we've got a, a town hall that we've announced for next week that's coming up and, and it's oversubscribed by the local citizens. The little town of Elk Creek has about 110 people in it. We have 275 people already registered and RSVP'd for this town hall because the entire local community supports it and they wanna know what's going on. And, and we, we, about every six to eight months, we try to do a town hall. So uh, all part of that, that open communication and honesty with the local people, they respect it, we respect them, and we're working well together. Well, in addition, of course, to having community support for your project, the industry is watching you very closely. There's quite a bit of buzz, actually, about scandium. Would you mind talking to us about the supply and demand issues related to scandium? Because, you know, we're finding that we're getting a lot of inquiries about this right now. And, and it is, it's, it's a really exciting part of the project. I mean, we still consider niobium to be our base material. Great foundation for any project because it's a very good ore grade and it's a, a very stable price for this material. So banks are supportive, investors are supportive. But scandium is the one that, that intrigues me probably the most of the three uh, super alloys that we're going to produce down there. Scandium, today there's anywhere from 5 to 10 tons of this material produced in the world. About five of that consistently comes out of China, and then five sometimes does and sometimes doesn't come out of Russia. You never know when their production is, is going to be on or not. But the quality of the Russian scandium is also very, very uh, well known. So you've got um, a regular five tons a year coming out of China. Quality is, is sometimes questionable. You've got uh, very good quality coming out of Russia, but the, the volumes and whether or not it's going to be there is somewhat questionable. So there's only 10 tons of this material a year. You start taking a look at the potential uses of scandium. And John Kaiser, uh, who, who speaks about scandium a lot, has used this term, and I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due. The latent demand, and that's a, a term that John used, the latent demand for scandium is what's really exciting right now. I mean, you've got the solid oxide fuel cell industry all by itself that could use about 40 tons of scandium today. You've got the airline industry that if they can get a stronger, lighter material for the fuselage, they will do it, but they need a reliable supply of scandium. There's upwards of 300 tons of latent demand just in the aerospace industry. So the problem with scandium is the, the reliability and the production today. And that's where I think a company like Niocorp really separates itself from potentially the other uh, uh, junior uh, scandium companies as well, because when we produce niobium, we necessarily produce scandium. We're not producing scandium as our primary or only product. We produce niobium, we necessarily have scandium flowing with it, and we plan to produce 97 tons per year. 
Well, and speaking of your production plans, can you give us just a bit of an overview about NioCorp, just for our audience may, who may not be familiar with NioCorp and who also may want to be looking up the Scandium price chart as well? Yeah, good, good point, Tracy. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons, of course, why Scandium is so exciting. I mean, today's price is probably somewhere in the $5,500 per kilogram range. Now, I'm not suggesting that if we put a whole lot more supply out in the world that it will stay at that price point, but that's a pretty exciting price point to start with, and, and even a reduction of that into the three dollars to $4,000 per kilogram range still creates tremendous amounts of revenue and cash flow for NioCorp. And cash flow goes back to project financing and the ability to get the bank debt and the equity to fund the construction. So the prospects for supply and demand for Scandium are ex extremely exciting for many of our writers. Uh, Ecclestone, Bromby, many of our writers are very excited about Scandium, but they also like Niobium. And we've noticed a number of companies claim they have Niobium right now. So there seems to be a bit of a, a cattle rush to Niobium as well. Can you tell us why? Um, the only thing that I can think of, Tracy, is that Niobium is one of those very financeable elements right now. Um, niobium doesn't tend to, to really excite a lot of people like it does me. I get very excited about niobium because of all the things that it does to make our world a better place. It is truly a technology metal as far as I'm concerned. But it is very stable pricing. And if you have stable pricing in today's resource environment, that usually equates to easier or better financing. That's the only thing I can think of because bottom line is you can say whatever you want to say about your deposit, but you ultimately have to have grade. We have very good ore grades for niobium in our deposit. Well, you have cash, you've got management, you've got the team in place, you've got community support. What should we expect next, say in the next couple of quarters, Mark? Next couple of quarters, again, and this company is 100% focused on finishing that feasibility study. You know, that is the next threshold event for the company. Uh, Offtake agreements are much easier to get when you have feasibility studies in place. Uh, the financing really can't go any further in terms of the, the actual large equity and debt financing that we'll have to do to construct the project. Can't go any further until that feasibility study is done. So we are, we are really focused on getting that done, and I think in the next quarter or two, you'll see the final results of that. And then, you know, I will not be letting grass grow underneath my feet at that point because now we need to finance it and we want to build it. We want to get into production. Production is what we're focused on, ultimately. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to see you. It's always a pleasure to be here, Tracy. Happy to help you in any way.